Good morning, Jubilee. Happy Mother's Day. It's great to have you all here. Let's gather together. We're going to take some time to worship our God who has loved us and has extended his hand to us. We just want to praise him for who he is and what he's done for us. So let's join together. Shall its praise begin Taking away my burden Setting my spirit free The wonderful grace of Jesus reaches me Wonderful grace of Jesus Reaching to all the Reaches me oh. Wonder and praise now flow from my soul Forever my song will be In fullness I receive This great mystery This wonderful grace of Jesus Reaches me Yeah, right where we are grace of Jesus reaching the most defiled by its transforming power making him God's dear child purchasing peace and heaven for all eternity the wonderful grace of Jesus Reaches me, yeah. oh, wonder and praise now flow from my soul. Forever my song will be. Wonder and praise now flow from my soul. Forever my song will be. Oh, in fullness I receive this great mystery, this wonderful grace of Jesus. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. How are we doing? My name's David. Hey, if I haven't had the opportunity to meet you, my, name, my name's David. I'm the location pastor here. I've got Abby Nadolny, who's one of our leaders and members here, and we're just really happy to spend this morning together. Can I get a big happy Mother's Day yes. to all you ladies? Happy we Mother's are so Day. glad come on, you're come on. here. Let's give our mothers a round of applause. Come on now. Come on. We want to celebrate today. We do want to recognize that today is a, a special Sunday. And we want to celebrate the roles mothers play in our life, whether spiritual, adoptive, foster, biological. We want to honor you today and your investment in raising the next generation. In fact, mothers, we have a special gift for you. So ladies, on your way out, we're going to announce at the end of service. You don't want to miss that. And I just want to say, I'm so glad you're choosing to spend Mother's Day here, especially if this is your first time with us. If it is your first time, not only do we have a Mother's Day gift for you, we also have a welcome gift. We would love to connect with you. So on your way out today, head out the doors and there is a big white table. We call it the connect table. Please stop by. There you'll be greeted with a warm, friendly face, a welcome, a little gift, and really just a chance for us to meet you, to greet you, to connect, and to say we're glad you're here with us. That's right. 
Did you hear that greeting team? Warm, friendly face. Just, <laughs> just make sure. I promised. <laughs> We're gonna take the next few minutes to sing a few more songs together. Um, but ultimately we gather today because we want to honor God and we want to invite you into that. Um, you know, we don't know where you are on your journey of faith, where you're at in your relationship with God. But what we do know is that God loves you so much that he gave his son to die on a cross for you. And our hope for you today is that you encounter him, this God who loves you as we uh, worship him. So just invite you to join with us as we sing together. walls that we call sin and shame They were like prisons that we couldn't escape But He came and He died and He rose Those walls are up and down Remember those giants we call death and grave they were like mountains that stood in our way But He came and He died and He rose Those giants are dead now Oh, this is our God, this is who He is He loves us This is our God, this is what He does He saves us He bore the cross Beat the grave, let heaven and earth proclaim This is our God, King Jesus Thank you, Lord Remember that fear that took our breath away Faith so weak that we could barely pray But He heard every word Every whisper Now those altars in the wilderness Tell the story of His faithfulness Never once did He fail
Oh, the perfect Son of God in all His innocence. Here walking in the dirt with you and me. Oh, He knows what living is. He's acquainted with our grief. The man of sorrow, son of suffering. Blood and tears, how can it be? There's a God who weeps. There's a God who bleeds. Oh, praise the one who would reach for me. Hallelujah to the Son of Suffering. distant and removed, but you chased us down in merciful pursuit. To the sinner you were grace, and the broken you embraced, and in the end the proof is in your a God who bleeds. Oh, praise the one who would reach for me. Hallelujah to the Son of Suffering. Hallelujah. Sing your cry. cross, my freedom, your stripes are my healing, all praise, King Jesus, glory to God in heaven, your blood is still speaking, your love is still reaching, all praise, King Jesus, glory to God forever, your cross my freedom, your stripes, my healing, all praise, King Jesus, glory to God in heaven, your blood, still speaking, your love, still reaching, all praise, King Jesus, glory to God. of the vacuuming and I just felt the song came to me um, the, the, light, uh, the line was light in the darkness my God that is who you are and in that moment I realized how much darkness I just been kind of feeling weighing on me lately like on things and the truth is the scripture also says that um, uh, he has not given us a spirit of fear but of power love and sound mind so I don't know where you are this morning but I just feel like God is your father he loves you and he has love for you this morning he's your provider and he cares for you and he has sound mind and good Whoa. Oh, hail King Jesus, Lord over everything. All oh, hail the Lord of heaven and earth. All oh, hail King Jesus. King Jesus. Oh. 
that's the God we serve. He's the Lord of heaven and earth. You are on your throne. And recently, just was encouraging, uh, encouraging the men in our church, and he he brought us to the verse, but that Jesus' blood speaks a better word. We were actually just singing about that. He speaks a better word. I just want to say that to you. Whatever word, whatever, <clears throat> whatever anyone has spoken over your life, good or bad, even if it's good, just know. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to get there. Just know this. God's word is better. God's word over your life is a better word. It's a more healing word. It's a more freeing word. It's a word that's gonna bring you greater peace. And I want you to hear that today. God's blood speaks a better word over your life. Jesus, we just wanna receive that today because it's in your word, because you spoke it, God. We wanna receive it. We wanna believe you for it. We wanna trust in you, God, not trust in ourselves, not trust in our understanding, but look to you, God. Thank you for loving us so greatly, so powerfully. Just be honored in our service as we continue in your name. Amen. Amen. Well, hey, thank you again for spending this morning with us. If you missed the communion elements, this is a great time to grab those. They're at the end of the row. Um, If you're ready to go, say hi to someone sitting next to you and grab a seat. All right. So good to see so many uh, friends and family uh, with us this morning. Uh, We are going to have some baby dedications. Um, You can be excited. We we are we uh, we're we are going to have four families come up here in just a moment. I'm going to give a a bit of an explanation about what this moment's about. We've had nine, uh, we have nine families across our services dedicate children today, so it's been a really fun morning. Um, but uh, a baby dedication ceremony, this is, this is a, an opportunity for us to celebrate new life within our church and to share a special moment with families who will be uh, dedicating their child today. And a baby dedication uh, is a moment in each family's life that the whole church can look back on as an anchor and continual reminder to pray for him or her. And if you have children, you know that it takes a village. Can I get an amen? Amen. Come on, we know. We we need every prayer, every encouragement, every you're gonna get through this that we can get. This 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 is a family moment for us. This is about uh, making a promise to God as well. Baby dedications are about making a promise to God about how these families want to raise their child while also asking us, the church, to participate and encourage them in their journey. So with that, I'm gonna invite up uh, a few families here. If I could have up, just go ahead and come up as I call your name, David and Allison, Aaron and Renee, Josiah and Chelsea, and Ben and Carrie. Can you all come on up on the stage? with me. Don't be shy now. And just kind of fill in here. Josiah, if you'll just stand right here for me. Perfect. Frazier's on the other side. Walmans, we might need to shove down to the right just a little bit. Hey. All right. I'm going to tell you this before I forget. So families, we have a card and a Bible for you that is in the back. Samantha's pointing to the back uh, right of the room, so please take that before you go today. Um, But we're going to take a moment here, and in just a moment, they're going to read a prayer that they've prepared for the kids that they are dedicating. Some have one, some have multiple kids. Um, uh, But I do want to take a moment to honor the grandparents to these kids in the room. If you're a grandparent, could you just stand for me? Go ahead. Can we t- 
Thank you so much for being here. Proverbs 17.6 states that grandchildren are a crown to the aged and parents are the pride of children. Uh, and we are just really glad that you're here celebrating this moment with your grandchildren. Well, parents have an awesome responsibility in raising children. And these parents understand that and they embrace it. And today we wanna celebrate these parents' faith in God and their commitment to raise their children in the ways of the Lord. I'm gonna pass the mic down the line. If you would just introduce your child or children and then read your prayer and then just pass the mic down to the next family. When they conclude their prayer church together, will you just say amen with me? Hi, I'm David Cresswell. This is my wife, Allison. And we have both um, Anderson and Lennon that we're dedicating today. Our prayers uh, over both of them, it is, Lord, we thank you for choosing and trusting Alice and I to love, protect, comfort, and guide your precious gifts of Anderson and Lennon. We are blessed with support from our friends and family in this journey and thankful that your sovereign hand led us to Jubilee. We pray that you will plant your seed with Anderson and Lennon and that you will use the gifts, community, and resources you have provided us to cultivate, nurture, and grow their hearts to seek the Lord. Lord, we pray that Anderson would follow after you protect and steady his steps, and may he learn to hear and follow your voice. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, we pray that Anderson would trust in the Lord with all of his heart and lean in his own understanding and all his ways acknowledge him and he will make his paths straight. And lastly, Lord, we pray that Lennon would seek after your heart and that she might know your joy as her strength. And we pray Romans 12, 12, saying, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation and constant in prayer. Well, hello, I'm Carrie, and this is Ben, um, and our oldest, Zeke, is right here, but today we're dedicating Ezra and Ellie. Yes, you want to hold the mic? All right. Sweet Ezra, um, we thank you and how you brought so much joy into our home. We pray that you never lose your... Fierce desire to grow, move, and explore. We pray that God will use your curiosity and thirst for more to draw you to him and to knowing his grace and mercy for you. We pray that God will help your father and I to model faith in action and to guide you as we discover your life in Christ. We pray you may grow into a strong man of God. And Ellie, you are our biggest surprise. As the cares of this world draw your attention away we pray that God's spirit would fill you and, and you would know his love, a love that's greater than anything this world could offer. We pray that God helps your mother and I model his love for you to draw you close so that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. Amen. All right. This is Ivor, we've got Margo, I'm Josiah, this is Chelsea. Father, we recognize that you have given us these children as a gift to love, guide, and equip. We thank you for the privilege of being their parents and invite our church family to stand with us as we strive to lead and love them as you lead and love us, sacrificially and unconditionally. Our prayer and hope is that Ivor and Margo will one day acknowledge you, Jesus, as their Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit, be with us. Give us wisdom, humility, and fortitude in our journey as parents. Bless Ivor and Margo with a sensitivity to your voice and a hunger for your truth. Please make yourself known to them. May they follow you and love you all the days of their life. Amen. Amen. Hey, everybody. I'm Aaron. Uh, this is Henry Wanderground. And then we, this is my wife, Renee. And then we're dedicating uh, Baby Maisie and not Baby Poppy because COVID. Um, <laughs> all right. So, Lord, we thank you so much for blessing us with these tiny bundles of energy. We thank you for their infectious joy and pray that that gift will bring your light to those around them. We pray that as they grow, they will know you and hear your voice. We pray that they would learn the nature and power of grace for others and also for themselves. We pray that they find community that will help them shape them into the people you have called them to be. For Renee and myself, we pray that we continue to seek God first in our family and all that we do. We pray that you give us grace and wisdom in raising Poppy and Maisie. We pray for humility in asking questions and seeking guidance. 
Lord, we thank you so much for bringing these two into our lives, and we pray for more patience, strength, and energy as we go on this journey you have blessed us with. We love you so much, and thank you for these gifts. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me, and let's just say a collective prayer over these families and these children. I mean, what a blessing. Jubilee, our quiver is full. Praise God. Praise God. Lord, we just pray for these families. We pray for these kids. And we do ask you to bless them. We thank you that you knitted them together. We thank you that you have a plan and a purpose for each one of their lives. And God, we thank you for the privilege that it is to stand together and and walk this the days ahead out together. Bless them in their households in your name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well done, guys. Carefully exit the stage. Watch your step. Well done, kiddos. I mean, usually there's one meltdown on the stage and you held it together. I was impressed. I thought the Walmans were gonna get the mic. I thought they were gonna get it, but they, they managed. Uh, hey, today has already been um, a special day, uh, but it's about to get a, a little bit more special or to keep on that special theme. Um, in, in lieu of a sermon, uh, we actually have uh, put together a special um, video for you that, that speaks to the impact and importance uh, of mothers. And uh, can we just take a moment? I don't know who all to thank, but I know the team, Andrew in the AV team has worked and Pablo has worked very hard on this video. Can we give them a round of applause? <laughs> All right, turn your attention to the screen. I love my mom because she gives the best hugs. Because she's cool. I love my mom because she's always generous and nice to me. Because every time I fall on my bike, she just helps me. Because she keeps me alive. She's very nice to me. Because um, on Friend Friday, she lets me watch movies. Because she's nice to me and she's the best. Because she gives me snuggles. Yeah, she's so loving and caring and providing. She likes. Uh, she likes uh, playing with us and that she's always honest with us. Because whenever I'm sad, she always gives me a big hug. It's because um, she makes the best beans and rice. I love how caring and kind and sacrificial she is for all of us. Um, there's four of us in the house and she does make sure that each of us have time with her. I guess I'd have to say like what I really love about my mom is just like she's so caring and just like patient with like me and my siblings. I like when my mom gives me kisses. Um, cooking. She plays games with me. I like it when my mom scratches my back. I like when she hugs me so tight when I'm sad. She always tucks me in at night and sometimes she even makes my bed. And she always tucks me in the bed with my baby. She's very real. Um, We have very real conversations. She doesn't uh, shy away from telling me the truth. I would want to tell her that I really love her so much. And I, I I couldn't do anything without her. I would want to tell my mom that there's no one like her and she's the best one. That I love her a lot. I love her because Jesus made her. I love you. That she's the best. I love you. I love her so much. How much I love her. I love you and I miss you. (laughs) Hi mom, I'm on the big screen. I love you.
In my childhood, I wasn't really mothered. Fast forward, when I was 17, I had become a believer, and I was someone who was very self-reliant, and honestly, it took the love of mothers um, who came in and brought, who nurtured me, like, they really nurtured me spiritually, but it came through very practical means. When we moved to the, to the United States, to a different country, I, it was just a whole different place for my parents and I. So it's just a, con a constant trusting between us and patience that I know that I can go with her in moments that are just very difficult times. There were a number of women uh, who have been in some capacity or another like a spiritual mother to me. I think how that's looked over the years, the last couple decades has been being recognized and seen, being remembered, being prayed for, being provided for in different ways. But it's also looked like spiritual mothers who have, who have been willing to go into my past with me. They were stepping into my brokenness and it was uncomfortable. I mean, they saw ugly sides of me. I know I have made quite a few mistakes, but her love and patience has just helped me grow in, in just trusting I think that just the comfort that my mom brings and like the intentional comments and just acts of service that my mom will do for me and for my family and her friends have just really brings me back to God and just the Father that He is and how much He really sees and wants to do the little things for us. I wouldn't have said that I needed to be mothered, but God knew I needed to be mothered and the women around me in our church knew I needed to be mothered and He brought me. To, the to his family for that purpose, that he could bring healing, he could bring love into my life, he could shape me for future generations, really, for my own kids and for the impact of, of my life in the lives of other children and other peer mothers and however that, that looks. Me seeing how my mom has loved others, it, it just has had a shape on how I love my friends and my community, home listening, being patient. My mom's a really good listener. She's always there. Uh, she makes me feel really safe and just like I can say anything. There's, it's a no judgment space. I think the way that being mothered has impacted my relationship with God has been in that I feel more freedom to approach God because I know that He really, really loves me. Knowing that He had mercy for me, knowing that He had grace for me, knowing that there wasn't anything too scary from my past or too big for me to ask or too ugly for him to want to take in. There wasn't anything too broken that he wasn't willing to fix. And so I felt a courage and I still do to approach God more freely. I do remember this um, season in our family where my brother needed a surgery about his heart and my mom just we were just gathering, my mom was just telling us to trust in God. She's a woman of prayer and she will pray a lot for all the things that will happen in our family, in our household. And just seeing that, seeing her faith, seeing how she will just take us and start praying has just had a big impact on, on my relationship with, with God. When I wasn't as like strong in my relationship with God, just like the truths that she offered have like stuck with me. Even when I didn't want to receive it, like to this day, the things that she said has always stuck with me and shaped who I am. And just her bringing up over the years how she's seen me grow in that area and giving me wisdom on how to keep hearing from God has been so helpful. I love my mom. She has called me out in moments that I have not liked it. And I just really appreciate that now my life will be very different if my mom has not been how she has been. I'll, I will not be the man who I am today because of my mom, because she, I know that she loves me. Honestly, if I wasn't mothered, I had enough brokenness in my life that I don't know that I'd be alive. Because when you go through depths of brokenness and lies root down so deeply, it's really hard to know hope, but beyond that, I was afraid of marriage. I was afraid of having children. 
I mean, I wouldn't be married if I didn't have their love, honestly. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have children that I have. It was incredibly life-changing for me to have women who were willing to come in and redefine that experience for me. I think if I had to say something to my mom, I would say that I just appreciate everything that she does, like the little things that she thinks just goes unseen. But everything, I appreciate so much, and I just admire everything about you. Mamita, I love you. I, I appreciate you, and thank you for being the mother that you have been throughout my life. There's just the depth of thankfulness and also sadness in it all. I mean, how do you talk about motherhood without feeling all of that? Even though I'm crying, that's really a joyful thing. <laughs>
it doesn't have to be biological and yes. um, that is something we all have been called into and I feel like specifically for me where um, my mom is not here or like I have got into a place where I feel like there are spiritual mothers who have been there to kind of like play that role of my biological mother and I have been mm. blessed to to say that when it comes to missing, yeah, I miss my mom and everything, but I feel like there are people that have been there to kind of like fill that void that mm -hmm. would have been there. Um, and the church has been huge in doing that. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of, you know, mothers, um, especially in Jubilee, and I would definitely call a name. Uh, Mrs. Vicky has been very <laughs> impactful. <laughs> Um, in my life, and I would say with Anna also, um, she's she's one of my prayer partner, mm -hmm. and it's like we build each other up spiritually, and that is something I really love about you know mothering. It doesn't have to be just biological. Um, being open to accept that, and you know enjoy the freedom that we have in Christ, that we are you know um, brothers and sisters or uh, family. Um, that has been a blessing to me. We can wait a long time for permission to do things that God has asked us to do. And I think like spiritual mothering, I wouldn't have put myself in that category, but I, I think that like the ways that I have been most loved have been through like mothers or spiritual mothers. Mm -hmm. um, there's one lady who <coughs> is my dear friend um, back in Iowa and she she's single and has no kids and she has probably made the greatest impact outside of my mom in in her love and like support towards me and I think it's easy things just like showing up <laughs> asking how kids are it's like but I mean I was thinking about this today kids love their mom like kids really love their mom but moms love their kids and it's like we have to give ourselves permission to like love way more than it seems acceptable mm -hmm. because I mean especially if you're in the category of spiritual mothering that kid's gonna think you're weird and that's okay <laughs> <laughs> like like we're allowed to love to that degree to that depth that like Jesus Jesus loved us a spiritual mothering role is I was actually reading through some Psalms and Deuteronomy and Exodus and it was like then this generation what we want to pass on is that our God is faithful. Because sometimes that's what you just need. Like I was talking to a mom and she was heard like some parenting things that we'd done and she goes, you were laughing. Like, yep, you can laugh at some of the most difficult moments because our God is faithful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it, even when you <laughs> have vomit and blood and <laughs> our God really is with us and I think though like when you're in those moments you're like I'm not sure where he is I need a voice of somebody that's been maybe a few yards ahead that have that can declare and say I know and have watched God be faithful to me yeah. and he will be faithful yeah. to you too really you just good. need that yeah. You just need that voice sometime to remind you yes. of someone that's mm -hmm. actually walked through some similar things. There was like a year or two after college where um, my, my predominant just feeling was loneliness. And so I would call her and I would cry and she would pray for me. And I just remember thinking like, these cannot be fun conversations with her. <laughs> She could not see my phone come up or my name come up on that phone and be like, oh, great, we're going to get to talk to Sam. But she would just be so faithful to meet me right where I was at and speak truth to me and call out lies. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a lot how I view mothering is like just being there in whatever season they're in and like just loving them right where they are, speaking truth and calling out lies oh. and just embracing them. Being a mother, um, a lot of us, when it comes to mothering, we have all this guilt about, you know, some of the things we should have done right or some of the things that we have missed. 
And the fact is, um, no one is a perfect mother. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how good you are, there is always something that um, your kid or people around will be like, you would have done this differently. But as mothers, we um, being able to rest in, you know, in Christ and the finished work of the cross to say, okay, in his, in my weakness, um, he has made me perfect. And I'm able to lean into that as a mother to be able to um, mother my biological kids and even, you know, my spiritual kids is just knowing that um, in my own self, I cannot do it and I need God to help me. And for us as mothers also to be vulnerable to other mothers and say, hey, we're in, we're in this together, nobody um, got it, and be able to support each other and build each other up in that. So um, I feel like as mothers, that is something we need to do more and probably maybe share some of their stuff we're going through to encourage others. Um, that way, um, as Anne was saying, like we, we all have struggles about being mothers, but um, we can be there for each other. Yeah, that reminded me of something <laughs> that I didn't. I've heard, I've heard, I've believed this lie, heard this lie, I've heard other people say this, but I think it's really easy when you're comparing yourself to other mm -hmm. moms, yeah. you start thinking my family would be better off without me. And I just, well, I just want to say like, that's not true. Mm -hmm. um, and it's an easy, it's an easy lie to believe. Um, but God has placed us where we are with a purpose and for a reason. Mm -hmm. And, um, and he doesn't want you ending each day feeling like a failure. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I just yeah. wanted to say that because I think there's a lot of people who believe yeah. that and hear yeah. that. <clears throat> That's good. In my role as a youth leader, just some of the things that I see uh, youth like needing from mothers or spiritual mothers, um, I think some of the best moments are like, when we get down into their goofiness and like celebrate with them, their weirdness. <laughs> and like one thing that was so impactful to me growing up, I mean, I was a really weird kid, was like... Was. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, I just felt like my mom would just like celebrate that with me and just be weird with me. But then the thing that she did wonderfully and the thing that we need in this generation is like calling out the good things that we see in them yeah. before we totally see it mm. because i mean it's it's hidden beneath a lot of layers yeah. but speaking it into truth it like into them and being yeah. like this is this is who you are mm -hmm. now practice it <laughs> yeah well when i was thinking about what spiritual mothers and how they're needed in the church i looked up the word mothering and it went to nurturing, but then nurturing went to providing nourishment. And I thought of all the women that I know in the church that provide nourishment, and nourishment comes in different forms. Like yeah. different women have different giftings. Not every yes, woman yes, looks yes. like what the mothering, nurturing, what we would maybe culturally define that as, but they bring nourishment in different ways. And I think that's what I, I would want is women to not um, limit themselves yeah. or limit who can speak into their life. Yes, that's um, so good. Because it comes in all different mm -hmm. forms and we need all different kinds of women speaking into our life. Like I think about the ways I've been nourished when Anne has been leading worship and yeah. the prophetic gift she has, or when I hear a blessing, you know, pray, I feel nourished by that. Mm -hmm. And Samantha, like when I hear the, the parents of the youth saying, Sam is present mm -hmm. with my kids at their, at their recitals, mm -hmm. at their track meets, at their, like she is present with them, that, that's nourishing their hearts. So I think that, that is what I'd really like, just to free women to use the gifts God's given them and acknowledge that God really does have a place for them yes. here. I was thinking about that and I just felt like, 
you parent or you mother the way that you were mothered. And for some of us, that's a really good thing because we had good mothers um, who pointed us to God. Uh, for our, some of us, that is not our story. And I was just thinking about the importance of receiving the parentage of God and that being what we mother out of. And um, thinking about how uh, God, He parents us in a way that is like Zephaniah 15, that is like, I'm delighting over you and I'm singing over you and I'm rejoicing over you. And then He is also parenting us in the, um, you know, the Psalm 23, my rod and my staff comfort you. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> was just thinking about the importance of the relational aspect of parenting, but also the lordship aspect of parenting and remembering that um, in order for us to understand our role as mothers, we have to understand God's role in us and that He is the relational, um, compassionate one. He is also the one who sets the boundaries that right. fall in pleasant places yeah. for us. And, um, and we can have so much comfort that if we were not parented well by our mother, we have a perfect parent in God. And, um, and, we, and any of us can receive that. I mean, that's something that I need to go to Him daily for. <laughs> like, father me, parent me, show me where my heart is wrong, show me what is good, encourage me. That was amazing. <clears throat> I, I, um, if you're new with us, one of the things that we hope um, you experience, uh, we, what we hope is the experience of Jubilee Church, is that you experience family. Um, God is a father. The big picture of history, big picture of the Bible is that God is a father, and he's after a family of every, of every tongue, every tribe, and he's going to get it, and he gets it through his son Jesus who died for us, that through his blood and his broken body, uh, we have been forgiven uh, in a horizontal way. Um, Jesus said in, in John 15 to his disciples that the, the Father has loved me, and as, as, uh, as the Father have loved me, I'm loving you. Now, as of I have loved you, I want you to love one another. And so the experience of church feels like family, that you would experience brothers that you would experience sisters, that you would experience mothers and, and fathers and, and, and grandparents and, and cousins and uncles. And, and that is what uh, the church is meant to be like. And, and I hope that, A, that you feel that and that you receive that. But I'd also love to exhort you to, to give that, to know that the impact of God's love for you is to extend that to others. And, and many of you who would even have hopes of, and I've experienced that, I've experienced the goodness of that. And, and mothers in this church throughout uh, my time here has been so impactful. Um, the, the nurturing and the comforting, representing the heart of God. I mean, that's what God said in Isaiah 66, 13. Harrington, for those who don't know her, and uh, she had something she would like to share that I would love uh, for her to pray over us as well. It says in Romans 8, 35 through 39, it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for you, your sake, we rooted back in my past. You know, just kept on forcing me back there. And I believe there's some people like that today that there's this invisible cord that keeps you rooted in the past. And you just think, well, if I had a mother like this, if I had a parent like this, I would be different. But God wants you to know, he wants to sovereignly come by the power of his spirit and sever that cord to free us to receive his love in amazing measure because nothing can separate us from the love of God. Isaiah 49, 15.
Can a mother forget her nursing child? Can she feel no love for this child she has born? Though she may forget, God says, I will never forget you. I will never forget you. God wants to pour out his love. New day for us to walk in, Jesus. Thank you, God, that your love changes us from the inside out. Amen. Amen. Stay uh, standing. I want to pray just, uh, if, you're, if you're a mom, would you just raise your hand? I'm going to pray. If you, would you, uh, if you know them, if you just uh, extend your hand their way, I want to pray uh, for mothers. Um, specifically, I've heard about this thing with, with moms that they're, they're commonly insecure. Those things, think about what God declares over you. I, I would love for you to hear the voice of God. This is my daughter who I'm well pleased. If you are in Christ, that is, if you are a Christian, that you have receiving the forgiveness of your sins and his righteousness, not a righteousness of your own, but his righteousness. He wants, he wants you to feel the clothing, fill the cup of those around them. They just empty theirs and be content with that. They are who you've made them to be and we're so grateful for them. God, I pray you would even begin to show them in the new ways, just the wonder of how you've made them. Just thinking about the scripture that's on those wonderful pictures, Psalm 30, 139, fearfully and wonderfully made. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. I do just want to exhort us all in being family to be mothers. Of it all, Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end. It will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus. elements, you can get those out. In just a moment, after I, we conclude, as Brian mentioned, there's a team of people to my left and your right who want to encourage you, pray with you today. Especially if you're here and you, as you're hearing us sing and talk about God's love, in knowing him, I just want to acknowledge it's possible that you're like, I, you might be here and think, I don't know God like that. I don't know his love like that. We just want you to know you can know his love. You don't have to go get anything right out there. It is not by anything we do that we come into a relationship with Jesus. It's simply by having faith that Jesus is the son of God that we are broken people that could never get it right to sacrifice on the cross for us. <clears throat> just a couple reminders before I conclude us in prayer. And just again, band's gonna linger, don't rush out. I know there's stuff. I know you have plans, but don't rush past if God's doing something in your heart today. A um, couple things that are unique though today, I do want you to remember. We have a, a photo booth set up if you'd like to grab a, a family picture. Um, open, and all of God's people said, amen, amen. Come forward and receive prayer and have a wonderful rest of your Mother's Day.